What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, in 10 minutes or less, I'm gonna show you how to replace the front wheel bearing hub assembly on your 2002 to 2010 Ford Explorer. This method will work for the 4x4 models and the 2x4 models. Let's get started. Now, before you even jack the wheel up off the ground, the first thing you wanna do is pop off your lug nut cover like so, and it'll give us access to our axle nut which is a 29 millimeter. Now, if you live in the Rust Belt of America, you might have rust buildup around this. It helps to get a wire brush and spray some penetrating fluid in there. So with the wheel on the ground, take our 29 millimeter, my breaker bar, break this loose. Now, everything else can be done with the wheel up off the ground. With our wheel up off the ground, we can go ahead and take our 19 millimeter socket and remove the lug nuts. All right, with our lug nuts removed, we can go ahead and remove our wheel. And now life hack number one, what we're gonna do is because we're working on this side of the vehicle, we could go in and turn the wheel all the way to the right. That way we can better access our caliper bolts. Okay, first thing we're gonna do over here is remove our two caliper bolts. They are 14 millimeter. Now you never want to let your caliper hang by just the hose, so I went in the garage and I found a Major League Baseball bucket which is supporting my caliper. Next, we could go ahead and remove our caliper bracket bolts. There's two, one there, and one right there. And these bolts in particular are an 18 millimeter socket. With our caliper bracket removed, we could go ahead and remove our rotor. And now before we go any further, be sure to trace this ABS cable up into the engine bay. It's usually held in the engine bay above the wheel well by a little clip. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is remove our axle nut all the way and then turn it on enough so that the face of the nut is even with the face of the axle shaft. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a dead blow mallet and hammer on the front of that and it's going to start pushing our axle shaft back through the hub assembly and once you get it pushed through you get better access to the 15 millimeter bolts there's three of them that hold the hub assembly in so i have this nice and flush i'm going to start hitting it now and as you can see nice and loose perfect and we could go ahead now and take our axle nut off the rest of the way, keep it to the side. With that done, we can now proceed with removing the three 15 millimeter bolts. And like I did earlier where I turned the wheel to gain better access, I'm gonna do these two with the wheel turned all the way to the right, and then I'll turn the wheel all the way to the left and we'll get that third one down there. Okay, here's our first, keep that off to the side. Here's our second, keep it off to the side. And now, like I said, I'm gonna turn the wheel all the way to the left and we can gain access to the other side. There's our third, beautiful. Okay guys, so now you have two options here. Option A is to use a slide hammer. A slide hammer bolts to the front of this and it's got this thing coming out and you just wail back on it and the hammering force is supposed to pull this off. Yes, it works. And yes, it's painfully slow, but it will work. Option two, which I don't recommend, but also works for people who are out in the sticks and don't have an auto parts store and don't want to wait for a slide hammer to come in the mail that they're only going to use once. You can actually take the mallet and just start ramming on this, okay? Just ramming on it. I used a 10 pound sledge once and it starts pulling away at the top and you can actually get a chisel down in there and it just starts opening up the gap and it will work. Like I said, it's not recommended, but it will do the job. Now, as far as this hub assembly goes, I replaced it probably 3000 miles ago and it's already making noise. So I'm just gonna use the mallet method and you'll see this thing is gonna plop right off. Okay, what we can do now, and this is critical, we need to clean out the inside of this bore, get a nice piece of emery cloth, clean it up, and then we're gonna apply some anti-seize to it. Okay, so with our bore nice and clean, what we can go ahead and do, lightly coat the inside with some anti-seize, because I have a feeling I'm gonna be doing this again. 
So we'll coat the bore with anti-seize and then we'll coat the splines very gently with some anti-seize as well. Just so if it ever has to come apart again, you'll have no issues whatsoever. So what we can do now is get our new hub assembly up over our splines, get it locked in, just give it a nice push, get it set up in the bore, get our bolt holes lined up, and then what I'm gonna do is go around from the back and start getting some of the threads started. I also took some brake clean and cleaned off these bolts real well. If you have a wire brush or a bench grinder, you can do that also. All right, so with our three hub assembly bolts in and hand tight, we can now go ahead and torque them down. Now listen carefully to the torque specs. If you have a 2002 to 2005, which is a third gen Explorer, you will torque these three bolts down to 83 foot pounds. If you have a 2006 through 2010 Ford Explorer, which is the fourth generation, you're going to torque them down to 90 foot-pounds. Now I'm going to turn the wheel all the way to the right and we can start putting our brake hardware back on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our new harness, clip it into this little opening on the knuckle. With our harness clipped in, we can now go ahead and install our rotor. Now we can go ahead and install our caliper bracket. Now, I'm not sure why they did this, but for some reason, every year the torque spec is different on these caliper bracket bolts. So in my case, I'm gonna do the easy thing, call it a happy medium and torque it down to 100 foot-pounds. What we can do now is install our two brake pads. I do recommend using some sort of brake lubricant or anti-seize on these slides. Now what we can do is go ahead and slip our caliper up over our brake pads and we can very simply reinstall our two brake caliper bolts. We can go ahead and torque these two bolts down to 24 foot-pounds. Now we can go ahead and very simply take our ABS wire Connect it in this little clip here, snap it into place. This little grommet goes under there. This one clips in, good. This one, good. This one, good. And then there's a hard to reach one up under there. The plastic clip is broken, so I'm gonna go up under the hood and fasten this up there with a zip tie, but we can plug it in and then I'll tuck it up and through. And we are now getting down to the nitty gritty. What we could do now is go ahead and reinstall our wheel. We can go ahead and reinstall our axle nut. You might want to use some anti-seize on the threads. Okay, and what we're going to do now is let the vehicle down onto the tire and put our final torque onto our axle nut. So, listen closely. In the manual that I use, which is the Haynes manual for the 02-10 to Ford Explorer, it wants me to torque this down to 183 foot-pounds. Now, my torque wrench only goes to 150 foot-pounds, and most of them that I look for only go up to 150 foot-pounds. What is kind of confusing to me is that on the two-wheel drive models, it uses the same exact hub assembly with no axle nut because you don't have the axle shafts in the front. It's not four-wheel drive. It says if you go too little of a torque, it's premature wear on the bearing. If you go too much of a torque, it's premature wear on the bearing. But how does that make sense if the two-wheel drive models doesn't even have an axle nut in the first place? I'm gonna torque this axle nut down to 100 foot-pounds, drive it, and we'll see what happens. And maybe I'll be back again in a month doing another hub assembly, maybe not. And that brings me to another point I have. I kept buying those $40 eBay bearings Twice they made noise. So I dished out the $110 and went with Timpkin, and the day I put it on, it made noise. So I'm back to the $40 eBay bearing. I'll keep you guys posted. We'll see what happens. I got it on Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description. And if you want to take your chance at the Timpkin, I'll also leave the link in the description. So after I torque this down to 100 foot pounds, torque all my lug nuts down to 100 foot pounds, you guys will be good to go. Thank you for watching, and I hope there's somebody out there that I would be of some help to. Peace.